Welcome back for the final lesson of chapter three. This is section nine, apply rational numbers. The textbook says that you, we're um, going to spend about 45 minutes on this. We shall see. It should be done in one class period if they're right this time. And the objective, students will apply ration, the understanding of the four operations of rational numbers to evaluate mathematical expressions. I'm thinking order of operations is going to come in play in this lesson, but let's check it out and see what we have coming for us. Well, they're only showing eight resources, so maybe, just maybe, we'll get that lucky. The hottest temperature recorded in the United States was 136 <coughs> degrees Fahrenheit in 1913 in Death Valley. Now, I am impressed that in 1913, they got it down to 0 0.06 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, that really does impress me. The coldest temperature recorded was negative 62.1 degrees in Prospect Creek, Alaska in 1971. Ah, pretty stinking cold too. The hottest temperature recorded, oh yep, how can you find the difference in degrees Fahrenheit between the two extreme temperatures? These are the things we're going to be talking about in this lesson. The order of operations, see I told you it was going to come up, used to simplify numerical expressions with whole numbers also applies to simplifying numerical expressions with rational numbers. If the expression contains fractions and decimals, use the commutative properties and the associative properties to group like forms together and then simplify as much as possible and then rename the numbers into the same form. Just like they had us do in that horrible chapter or lesson involving adding, subtracting rational numbers, I think we're going to see some of that again today. So they want us to evaluate this problem and I'm looking at it A times B has got multiplication plus C minus D, that's addition and subtraction. So we've got a couple different problems involving order of operations here and luckily this problem's laid out to where the order of operations isn't going to be a big deal. We're just going to work it from left to right. However, we do need to look at doing some grouping because we've got A representing a fraction 5, 6, B representing another fraction negative 5 over 4, C being 0 0.75 and D being a fraction of one third. So working the problem out, A is going to be 5, 6, C was 7.5, D was one third and B was negative 4.5 everything checks. Let's keep moving. Now we're going to take and watch the textbook as they move through the steps of solving this problem. First thing they're going to do is multiply out their fractions. Fractions are our friends, so with fractions being there, let's just go ahead and multiply them because order of operations, PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. What they did is they took the 5 6 times the 4 fifths simplified and multiplied and that gave them the negative two-thirds you see right here. Now from there next thing they did is this stupid thing don't do the stupid thing don't change a negative to a positive and I'm going to come back and show you how I work it here in a minute because that's just stupid no reason to do that. From there they took and rearrange them using the commutative property. I see why they did the stupid thing, but still it's stupid. And from there, they took an um, negative two-thirds minus one-third, gave them a negative one, and add that to the z uh, 0 0.75, um, and that's going to give you a negative 0 0.025 for your final answer, which, what do you mean? Uh, my decimal landed in the wrong spot zero point. Now let's try that again. That one does check. Now I'm going to show you how I would work that problem because the way they worked it gets a little messy there and we're just going to compare our two methods here. Now I do like the way that they started the problem. They could have showed their work a little better but it made perfect sense. They started off by doing the PEMDAS thing. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally which meant they're going to multiply and divide from left to right first in this problem. So from here, 5 went into 5 once, 5 went into 5 once, 2 went into 4 2 times, 2 went into 6 3 times. 
multiply that out. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 1 is 3. Positive times a negative is a negative. So you get negative 2 thirds plus 0 0.75 minus 1 third. Next, they, the reason they change this to a plus and negative because the commutative property technically only applies to addition and multiplication, but addition is just adding the negative, which is what they showed there. So I'm not going to change this to a plus because it just gums things up. I'm going to keep it as negative two thirds. I'm still going to move the negative one third over here, but I'm not going to do plus or minus. I'm just leave it as a minus and then plus 0 0.75. Now the thing you got to be careful of is making sure you carry your signs through it. That negative sign, it belongs to the one third. That positive sign, it belongs to the 0 0.75. You got to make sure you're carrying the signs through. Negative 2 minus 1 gives me a negative 3 thirds plus 0 0.75. That, of course, becomes 3 divided by 3 is 1, a negative 1 plus 0 0.75, and that will end up equaling a negative 0 0.25. Signs are different. Find the difference. Sign in front of your larger number goes in front of your answer. Not too bad, really. Now they ask, was it useful to use a commutative property in this? And the answer is absolutely, because otherwise you would have had to convert 7.5 into a fraction or these two numbers into a decimal so that you could go from here to here and then here to here. So commutative property, absolutely, it was a big help in solving this problem. All right, now it looks like it's fixing to be your turn to try and solve a problem on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and want to see if you can get this one right, and I will come back and show you how I work it in just a minute. Did you do it? Let's see how it works out. Now, first thing I do want to point out is that they have our problem written A plus B minus D, but they said to write it as a decimal. And if I have to write it as a decimal, I'm going to work this sucker as a decimal. So, A is going to be 3 fourths plus B is a negative 1.55 and then minus D is also a negative 1 fourth. First step I'm going to do is I'm going to take and do two things at once. I'm going to change my fractions to become actually, no I'm not either. I'm going to just take right now and make my ugly problem pretty. So making my ugly problem pretty, I have 3 fourths positive times a negative gives me a minus 1.55 and then a negative times a negative that gives me a plus one fourth. From here next thing I'm going to do is use a commutative property because I saw three fourths plus one fourth that's pretty easy to do. So I'm going to take three fourths plus one fourth minus 1.55 making sure the signs stay with their appropriate numbers. Three fourths plus one fourth is four fourths minus 1.55 that's 4 divided by 4 becomes 1 so I have 1 minus 1.55 which gives me the final answer of a negative 0 and 55 hundredths which is what we're going to take and put in our answer box so we're going to type in a negative 0 0 0.55 we're going to hit our check and it checks we did good is that the answer you got? I hope it is. All right, it looks like we're gonna step up our PEMDAS game using the order of operations because we have parentheses in this problem. So let's start it off and follow through the slide as they teach us how they would like it done. And it's loading, and it's loaded. So outside the parentheses, I have two fifths. Inside the parentheses, X is gonna be seven eighths plus y is going to be a negative one-fourth and then outside the parentheses in the end z is going to be a negative two-thirds. Check that. Why did it say that's not right? Let me wiggle it around. Come on, give it to me. There it checked it was right. It was in the right spot. It just needed to be calibrated a little bit. Next, we're going to work on solving the problem the way they say we should solve it. And woo, they threw out a whole bunch of garbly goop. So rather than just destroying you all with that, I am going to just take a screenshot of the original problem here 
and then I will work it out for you by hand because that is just a little bit overwhelming. All right, PEMDAS, the pleas and PEMDAS of our order of operations says parentheses, so we're going to do that first. But before I even worry about that, I'm going to worry about making the ugly problem pretty. So a positive times a negative, that's going to become a negative one-fourth. You know what? I'm going to take that negative one-fourth. I'm going to go ahead and change it to be two-eighths because I have to have a least common denominator there. And then right here, a positive times a negative, that's going to become a negative two-thirds. Next, inside the parentheses, we're going to take in 7 minus 2. Oops, let me put my two fifths here. 7 minus 2 is going to become 5 over 8 minus 2 thirds. From here, we get to multiply, simplify and multiply. And I can see that 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 5 once. I can also see that 2 goes into 2 once, and 2 goes into 8 four times. Now I'm going to multiply. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 4 is 4 minus 2 over 3 using my order of operations. And finally, I have to find my least common denominators, which is going to be, whoop, not 6. It's going to be 12. So I have something over 12 minus something over 12. 4 goes into 12 3 times. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 goes into 12 4 times. 2 times 4 is 8. And then I have 3 minus 8, that's going to equal to 5 twelfths. It's going to be a negative number. The sign in front of your larger number goes in front of your answer. And for that, it was signs are different. Find the difference. Not a bad problem at all. So plugging in our values here to check our work. 1 fourth became 3 twelfths. Accept that. And then our final answer was, what did we say our final answer was? A negative 5 eighths. So we're gonna come here, type in a negative fraction, five over eight, accept, and check our work. Why did it say that's wrong? Oh, should be negative five over 12. Did I say five over eight here? I didn't say five over eight, I wrote it wrong. So let's change that to be over 12. and accept try again this time we're good to go and now once again it is going to be your turn pause the video solve this problem see if you can get the right answer and there's your problem to work get started all right so what are we going to do well first thing we need to do is substitute values for variables x is negative five six so Oh, there's the dryer done. Negative 5 over 6 plus 0 0.3 parentheses. Y is going to be 1 third minus Z is going to be 3 fourths. And that's what we need to work on the problem. So first thing we're going to do is inside the parentheses. The so negative 5 over 6 I'm going to leave alone plus 0 0.3 I'm going to leave alone. But inside the parentheses, I'm going to need to find a least common denominator, which is going to be 12. 3 goes into 12 four, 4 times. 4 times 1 is 4. And then 4 goes into 12 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 5, 6 plus 0 0.3 times. Now here I've got signs are different. Find the difference, which is 5 with a sign in front of the larger number going in front of your answer, becoming a negative 5 twelfths. And now we got an issue here. I've got a decimal times a fraction. And we don't like multiplying decimals times fractions, so we either need to take this fraction and change it into a decimal. But wait a minute, 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. That 3 says it's not going to be a terminating decimal. So instead, let's change this 3 tenths into a fraction negative 5 over 6 plus 3 tenths, written as a fraction, times a negative 5 over 12 here. Simplify. So when we do that, I can say that, whoops, 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 10 two times. I can also say that 3 goes into 3 once, and 3 goes into 12 four times. And when we multiply that, now I get negative 5, 6 
plus, that plus sign right there comes down, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 4 is 8, and we're almost there. Now we're going to take and find our least common denominator. The least common denominator is going to be 24. So I have a negative something over 24 plus something over 24. 6 goes into 24 4 times. 4 times 5 is going to be 20. 8 goes into 24 3 times. And then 1 times 3 is 3. Signs are different. Find the difference with the sign in front of your larger number going in front of your answer, making that a negative 17 over 24. Let's see if my answer is right. All right, I've plugged in my negative 17 over 24. I'm going to accept it, and why am I wrong? Hmm, let me go back and check. I found my mistake. It was located right there. You see right there is a negative sign. I forgot to say a positive times a negative was a negative, making that a minus, which meant this would have ended up being a minus, which meant my final answer should have been a negative 23 over 24. Attention to detail, guys. It counts. Even I make little mistakes there. you got to pay real close attention. I think we're going to skip the apply problem on this one just because my planning period's about done and I've got to get back to school and don't have time to work it. So it probably won't hurt you anyhow. So you guys go ahead and get started on your homework assignment. Should know everything you need to know to get in here and make be successful. Good luck. See you tomorrow.